Donald Trump just won the presidency here in the US and will now become the 47th president of the United States. Now, inside today's video, I wanna talk about whether or not that's a good thing or a bad thing for you and your business over the next four years. So inside today's video, guys, I'm gonna talk about some of the opinions and viewpoints that I have and just some of the things I expect to happen within the financial markets and ultimately how that's going to impact you and things you need to watch out for. So let's get to it. All right, guys, so the first point that I wanna talk about is really just Donald Trump's overall impact in the financial markets now that he is going to become president again. Now, if you were watching the election results kind of roll in last night and things like that, you were probably paying attention to the markets as well. And you probably noticed that a majority of markets were up and these markets were expecting a Donald Trump win there. And the question is, is like, why are the markets going up? Well, the way that I look at this situation, when I think about Donald Trump, to me, that guy equals money, right? The name Donald Trump equals money. And so I think a lot of people are expecting an economic boom here over the next three to four years as he serves his term in office. And I think people are expecting all the markets, not just the US, US markets, I think we're going to see global markets expand and grow everywhere. And I think that's what the market showed us last night. Now, is this a good thing or a bad thing? I think that's up for interpretation. I can see it from both sides here on, you know, expanding markets and growing markets mean that we're honestly printing a lot more money. That money's going into the markets. We could have more inflation, things like that, that are obviously going to be detrimental. But at the same time, if you have investment accounts and things like that, obviously you want to see those things go up there as well. But over the immediate future, until Donald Trump is in office, what I'm expecting in the markets is just a bunch of volatility. I think there's going to be a lot of ups and downs based on things that are happening and things that are being said and just ultimately everybody waiting for him to get into office now when it comes to grain markets specifically and talking to the ag business owner or farmer or rancher out there historically when there's been a republican president in office grain prices haven't really performed that well i mean i'm just being frank with you they haven't done very well there so I, it's kind of up in the air here on how the markets will respond this time especially when he's talking about tariffs and you know the trade wars and stuff like that that we could potentially see here it's just going to be interesting guys but again back to the first first point that I want to talk about is I think everyone around the globe is expecting an economic boom across the globe because Donald Trump won the presidency. All right, guys, now moving into the second point here, the next thing that I think is going to happen, and this isn't really related to the financial markets, this is really related to more of the lending rates and markets like that. I think Donald Trump is going to get us back down to where we have three to 5% operating line of credits in this country. I think he's going to continue to push the Fed to lower rates there in order to basically add stimulus and everything to the economy and boost the economy right now this is going to be beneficial but it can also get people into trouble and the next word that i'm going to bring up here is greed so when we flood the markets with money right and we are providing this economic stimulus or quantitative easing and stuff like that that they called it back in 2008 to, to 2012 and even you know back in 2020 as well the problem with this is yeah we are putting more money into the economy but greed starts to take over for people and i'm not talking just you on the ag business owner side i'm also talking about banks as well and bankers, right? Because at the end of the day, with those rates are dropping, banks are going to be able to offer you three to 4% fixed rate, 30 years, 20, 30 years on your real estate loans, for example, and we're going to start shelling out the money again. Now, the problem though, again, and I've talked about this in several other videos, is you can either use this time frame here with cheap interest rates to your advantage, or it could actually sink you. Because when greed takes over, both farmers and bankers, it's never worked out well because people go and they start buying things that they don't necessarily need, or they just can't financially support long-term, right? When you think about buying a a piece of ground, for example, and you do a 20 year note, you're making a 20 year commitment there. Now, I know you might be thinking, well, yeah, duh, Jace, I know I'm making a 20 year commitment. But what I've learned over the years is that most people don't consider the market volatility that we're going to have over that 20 year period. They're pricing out their loan today based on today's grain prices, right? If it works today, they're going ahead and pulling the trigger. Now, what I always push my customers to do is yes, I want to lock in these low interest rates, but I want to make sure that we can afford whatever asset we're purchasing in good times and in bad times as well. We want to price both of those things out. And our software farmer metrics allows us to easily do this. Our customers know before they ever walk into the bank what the bank's going to say, but also too whether or not it's the actual right financial decision for their operation here, right? And so again, I go back to the second point here. I do think interest rates are going to drop even faster now that Donald Trump is uh, in the White House, but you have to be prepared here to not let greed take over your operation. That starts with one, having awareness of who you are and what's going on in the economy and how people are going to react emotionally, right? You have to have some level of awareness there. Second most important part here is you got to know your numbers, right? You have to know your numbers because it's in times like this where you are going to see business owners make financial commitments or decisions because of greed and the banks are going to allow them to do this because of greed that ultimately those decisions are going to sink a lot of these operations in the next three to five years as we go through the cycle like 
like we've been through time and time and time again here. I've seen it over and over again. That's why I'm talking about it here because I wanna make sure you're prepared to do that. One thing that you also need to be paying attention for is if you bought any equipment or real estate or anything like that over the past two years here, as the Fed starts to drop interest rates again here, you know, the markets are projecting another 25 to 50 basis point drop before the end of the year. I think we'll get a 25 one minimum. And then by the end of next year, I think we'll be back down to that three to 5% range on like your operating line of credit and things like that. So if you bought any equipment or anything at these higher interest rates, just renegotiate those rates. You can always renegotiate those things. And as the Fed is dropping rates, I would be calling my bank immediately telling them to drop rates as well. But again, guys, the whole point of this message right here is to make sure that you don't let greed overtake you into making poor financial decisions that your operation or business cannot sustain over the long term, right? Do not let greed guide your emotions here and cause you to be reactionary and impulsive and making these decisions versus being thoughtful and strategic and just making sound financial decisions. All right, guys, the last point here that I want to talk about is just the reality of the financial situation that the US government is in. I always laugh at presidential candidates that say they're gonna fix the budget, right? They're gonna fix the massive deficit that the US government is running year after year. Guys, at this standpoint, it doesn't matter who's in office, in my opinion, the math doesn't work out. Every president is gonna have to continue to print and print and print and print, right? I think we're gonna easily see trillions of dollars in debt added while Trump is in office in the next three to four years. And then going forward after that, because we have gotten to a point to where just our interest on our debt is so high that we have no choice but to print. Now, do I I think this will eventually lead to the failure of the US dollar? Yes, I do. Now, is it going to be in my lifetime? I don't know that. You know, nobody knows when. But the reason I share this with you is because even though Donald Trump's in office, it doesn't mean everything's going to be great long term. We still need to be looking at our balance sheets and planning on how we're utilizing our funds, how we're utilizing this capital, but also too, how are you preserving your value, right? Because your balance sheet is literally the, the simplest way I can describe it. It's a representation of your store of value on the assets that you own, right? And by store of value, I mean, how long is the value that an asset has going to be stable, right? Or increase over time there. And that's what banks are also looking at as well. One of the things I talk about with our customers all the time is number one reason, guys, the bank wants your real estate as collateral is because it's a stable store of value long term. The bank knows it's going to be there versus taking your grain inventory as collateral over. They can't hold that for three to five years. The value of that asset is going to diminish over that time. That's why your current assets have the least amount as, as far as store of value goes. Your intermediate assets have a medium amount. Your long term assets are your strongest store of value there on your balance balance sheet. And so guys, I, I share this because at the end of the day, we need to understand and just look at the reality of the situation when it comes to government spending and how much money we are printing inside of this country. I think in 2020, we were what around $23 trillion in debt. Um, and I remember being back in the bank and it hit 8 trillion. And I, we were like freaking out back then, like, oh my gosh, we're gonna see the collapse. And now we're at 35, 36. And we're currently at a negative $1.2 trillion deficit for the year. So guys, the, the writing is on the wall there long term. And so I share that with you because I'm always going to be focused on where where am I holding my store value? How am I maintaining my purchasing power? And for me, it's not in the US dollar. I'm not sitting there doing that. So that's why real estate has always been a great purchase for you know farmers and ranchers and things like that, because it holds that store value of the long term. The challenge with it, though, is do you get the ROI on the prices and where they're at today based on the you know cash flow that you're able to generate off that field? No, right? So this is where I'm not telling you what to do here. What I'm telling you to do is go do some research, right? Build your own conviction, do some research on what assets you could potentially hold there that are gonna maintain their store of value no matter what the government does as far as money printing and things like that, because that is going to happen. We, It's mathematically impossible. We cannot fix this massive, gigantic problem here that the government has created here, and we have to plan accordingly, right? And at the end of the day, that may not mean a great future for everybody, but I'm sharing this with you because I hope my listeners and my audience are thinking about this the way that I do, because I'm constantly learning about new assets and new strategies there that are maintaining a store of value, but also providing cash flow at the same time. And I think as farmers and ranchers, we get so sucked into the only thing that we can buy is real estate or the only thing that we can buy is cattle or whatever that may be there. When I have a lot of customers that have a big balance sheet and there's a ton of different areas that they could be deploying capital or investing that equity there that don't have to be related related to or involved in ag at all. And so I share all this with you to hopefully open your mind, but also push you to do a lot of research on your own and to build your own conviction and build out your own strategy, right? And the thing is, guys, I think, you know, I talk about financial advisors. It's become common practice in this country that people just take their money, they give it to somebody else, and they hope that other person will, will do great for them. Guys, I don't know one person in my life I know all of them that work with financial advisors, but I don't know one that has retired early or anything like that because their financial advisor did a great job, right? So that's just my viewpoint on it. I'm not saying financial advisors are bad. I'm saying when it comes to my overall game plan and strategy to build and maintain my wealth, it's up to me. 
right? I have to have the conviction in me. I have to be willing to go and do that research myself and build my own conviction. In my experience of talking with other mentors and things like that, that have a massive amount of wealth and, and are at places in life that I want to get to one day, this is the exact strategy they implemented. They took it upon themselves to find the conviction and go make this thing happen here. So that is ultimately why I'm talking about that. So guys, at the end of the day, like I said, kind of at the beginning of the video, we have no idea what's going to happen, right? These, these things that I talked about here are just things that I'm paying attention to. I'm in no way saying that, hey, this is going to happen or anything like that. It's just my opinion of what we can expect here now that Donald Trump is in office or going to be in office. Um, and just some things that I'm paying attention to and watching out for. Now, again, it's not fact. I have no idea for sure, but these are just you know my opinions here. So do with it what you will. I hope you found this video valuable. I hope it made you think about you know your strategy long term, but also too, I hope just talking about the balance sheet and stuff like that and how you view the balance sheet was a good discussion for you as well and helps you just develop a different perspective on how you look at your numbers inside your operation so that you can make better decisions going forward. So my friends, if you like this video and found value in it, please like the video below and then also to subscribe to our channel if you haven't and we will see you inside the next video.